We started it with money that we had from the Rural Development Programme, basically, yeah. um, to support local enterprise and to support sustainable development locally. So we had a pot of uh, money that we decided then, after consultation with various people locally, uh, notably Alice from Pansay Sun Farm and Tom. Uh, and Nathan, um, that it would be a good idea to sort of start in a very small way, which we did in July. I think we had four stalls to, to begin with. And then, well, it's grown. As you can see today, you've got about 14, I think, here today. The crisis point for us came at the end of the summer, beginning of September, where we had to take the decision, do we carry on? because it was felt that there was a possibility that the whole thing would fall flat in its face once the tourists had gone. Um, and I'm delighted to say that um, it hasn't. That we've got lots of oh, good. new stall holders. We've got, uh, kid you not, have come here. We've got lovely organic meats, Gwen Valley mm -hmm. meats, cheeses, um, and again, sort of individual stall holders like Vicky here who's brought her circus produce from mm -hmm. selling it. Um, and we've got flour, bread, uh, shellfish, really whatever's available locally on the day. So it's all seasonal local produce. So I think we've got a bit of a combination that you would find in most people's shopping trolleys that you can now actually get here uh, and know that it's sourced locally. I guess the main reason is, is, is all about uh, how we, we need to live more sustainably. Well, that's one of the, the key factors of, of why we decided. I think that was the impetus, from, certainly from Pan Seyson, who had yeah. a, sort of a strong uh, influence at the beginning, mm. because they wanted to sell what they produced with minimal road miles. Mm. Um, so anyway, just how, how, how um, really, really good, actually, and um, I'm quite delighted mostly today, actually, because I just thought this morning no one would come. It's miserable, yeah. and um, we've been really busy, so if we can do it in October, maybe we can do it in December. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll December. We'll see where we go from there. Yeah, that would be yeah. interesting yeah. to see what happens. Yeah, it seems to be doing well. More stalls. Um, really, really well. And, and, uh, and uh, yeah. I think... Um, the lo for the local community, I was really delighted to have so local for often like this in the North Pembroke mm. Show for this old Kennedy so. mm. Yeah, and it's just nice to give people options. Mm. This looks great, Nathan. Thank you very much, Albert. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am going to buy a few things. Fantastic. That's a uh, red curry. Yeah. Lovely squash that is. So why 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 are you why are you doing this, Nathan? This why am I doing store? this? This is my occupation. Yeah. 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 No, this is my my second career. Yeah. I, no, I, I I felt very strong that I want I want to be an organic grower. Yeah. Um, and I love growing veg. I also just felt that yeah. I was driven by, by sort of an interest in ecology and food and felt that I had to get off the yeah. off, off the fence and start doing it. I feel it's really important that we start producing a lot of local food very quickly and producing it in a sustainable manner. So I'm growing organically, I'm currently in the, in the uh, soil association, I'm in, in conversion currently, yeah. but we're yeah. growing the soil to, to a soil association of organic standards. I think it's incredibly important that we look at the way we're producing food, the way we're sourcing food, and the real cost of food. Yeah. And we need to do it incredibly quickly. And I think the best way I can act is act locally and grow it here locally and show that we can produce food here locally. Um, and we need a lot more people to do this. Yeah. Because my farm, I have 23 acres, I've got 15 acres potential of horticultural rotation. Yeah. We're just outside of Aberira. I couldn't, I couldn't supply Nuki or Aberira on, on, on off of our own farm, and I really seriously think we've got. Uh, we're staring down the barrel of the gun when we when we when we're looking at uh, food production. Yeah. In fact, I think we're staring down an empty barrel of an oil drum. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's that's, yeah. that's even more um, yeah pertinent. Yeah, couldn't agree more. So this is what I'm doing, and it also I think shows that we this is what you can do. 
here in Wet West Wales is that you can produce all of this stuff. It's very impressive. We've sold most. <laughs> yeah. It looks more impressive earlier. Here's the money anyway. So, three pound and ten pence. Okay. We got the ten pence. So we're now in the coach house, which is yeah. um, this is a new extension on a Victorian uh, coach house because it's been the recipient or the project has been the recipient of quite a lot of different grant assistance. We were able to put that money to the capital investment in refurbishing the building, yeah. extending it, mm. and creating a space, a multifunctional space. So we've got an education centre with a growing education programme. So we've got all different types of workshops ranging from crafts to artistic workshops to IT classes, Welsh classes, rug making, weaving, spinning, everything from local crafts to sort of uh, academic subjects. We've also got, um, as I say, again thanks to the pot of money that we've had through the Legal Development Programme, the facilities here to be able to offer training and vocational skills oh, yeah. to encourage people to develop employability. Mm, you know, mm, we are mm. in a, an area that is uh, economically compromised, so part of that, that pot of money then goes to providing enterprise and providing training. Yeah. And the market is the result of that. It's part of that part then we put towards subsidising the market to get it going. Yeah. With the hope that it'll develop its own momentum mm. and you know it and I'm pretty confident that it will. I, I think this centre has definitely brought another dimension to the village. It's provided the village with great facilities. I mean there's not many education spaces that you can say as well, as well equipped as we have here in our teaching room. You know, it's given the, the villagers access to computer training, uh, really good quality uh, educational materials. Um, and also, it's, you know, again, you, we're in a commercial space here, this is the cafe, but we source our <coughs> ingredients locally. Oh, we, yeah. we actually buy off our market traders. Oh, right, so, okay. uh, uh, you know, the, the fish, the meats, the, the vegetables, the produce, the soup of the day, very, very oh. often is whatever, can I say something in surplus that we oh, buy that's great. every day. So, so it, it's, you know, it's, it's proving to be a success on more than one level for us. Yeah. You know, it's, we can actually stand by our commitment to local produce mm. by buying mm. it literally at our back door. Yeah, yeah. Not many organisations <laughs> can say that. No, no, that's great.